Greetings. Kazi Najwal Islam, the most famous poet in Bengali history along with Tagore, and one of the most famous worldwide, was conceived on May 24, 1899. As a little boy, he studied hard, and he impressed his teachers with his fluency in Bengali, Persian, Arabic, and literature. However, in 10th grade, he didn't take the matriculation exam. Instead, he dropped out and went to the army. During his time in the army, he wrote the head of his battalion. However, he left the army when his regiment was disbanded. After that, he, in 1920, the same year, he started his journey into literature, the end of which would see him become the most famous Bengali poet in history. In 1920, he wrote his first literary work, Freedom from Bondage, was a novel. And while this did not receive critical acclaim, soon after, one of his works would. Just two years later, quite early in his career, considering that he went until 1962, in 1922, he published Bidrohi. Bidrohi is his most famous work by far, and it is one of the most impressive works of Bangladeshi literature. I must recite it now, because in fact, today is the 100th anniversary of its publishing. By the way, today is also Stephen Hawking's birthday. Bolo beer, bolo unna ta mama seer, seen Harry Amory not to see oi shika hima dreer. Bolo beer, bolo mua di seer mua kasfari, chundra surja guha tara chari. Voluk, bolok, bolok vidia, kuda asa on ours chedia, utiati chiro biso yami, biso bida treer. Momo lola trudro vogovan dole raj rastika dip the joy of sweet volovir amitero not a seer. Now let me tell you the history of this piece. It was written in December of 1921. When one sleepless night, Kazi Nazrul Islam, as I said, could not sleep. And so, instead, he decided to write a poem. The thing that had been haunting him all night was the tyranny of the British, how they never allowed free speech. Suddenly, the words came flowing into his head. And when he was done, he looked at his work. It was beautiful. And so, he knocked on the door of his friend, communist politician Muzaffar Ahmed. And when Ahmed read the poem, it struck him hard. It touched his heart. It was all in all the best work he had ever seen. And so, it was published in January of 1922. And immediately, it received critical acclaim from scholars all over the Raj. And the area that would now become India, you know, that would then become India, many Indian scholars, would um, place him high on the, his list, uh, their list, because of the announces <laughs> and describes a rebel. The stunning way he says, find your own God, and the blood he puts in each word. The absolute force he puts with every single word. That shocked the literary community of the Indian subcontinent. And suddenly, this rising star in literature had a long journey to go. However, that would be impeded by many obstacles. In 1923, April, in April of 1923, he was arrested by the British government. Why? Well, because he had wrote so it's a poetry work named Anandomoyi Agamon. And this work was criticizing the British government and uh, the British government of India. And so the British were furious at this. They hated it. 
I mean because it criticized the British. The British don't like critics, do they now? And so, they went to, and so, they starts literally everywhere for Qazi Nazrul Islam. And eventually, he was detained. He was brought to Calcutta, where his the trial was to be taken. And he gave a long, hard speech in court. One of the lines he said was, I was sent by God to communicate. But, while musical instruments are not unbreakable, who is there to break God? <laughs> Excuse him. Anyway, however, he was still sentenced to an ear in jail by the judge. And so, he was freed in December of 1923, and immediately after that, started writing, sifting out poems, writing, sifting out poems, by the day. Some of his contemporaries placed the number of poems he wrote in his journey at around 4,000. However, we have only found 2,260 of them, and we have only found the first lines of about 2,800 of them. And so, however, this collection of works, collectively named Nazrul Giti, which literally means Nazrul songs, or songs of Nazrul, wow, what a title. And so, this was a huge clump. He was writing more and more by the day. Wow. And so, the thing was, in 1924, when he was released from jail, he had met this beautiful woman named Pramila Devi, whom he had met in 1921 in the village of Kumila. And so, they married. And unlike the, uh, an earlier mar uh, marriage that went wrong in 1921, this was stable. Hooray. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. After that. <laughs> and... Uh, they, uh, they, they had four children. The first one sadly died prematurely, but the second one, named Bulbul, lived. And so, in 1928, now, for a long time, this Qazi Nazrul Islam, he had been running tons and tons of newspapers and newspapers and newspapers. And he was, and, I mean... They were coming out like at the speed of light, dude. And so, the fact was that he had a bunch of newspapers. One of them was Juke Bunny. And Juke Bunny, he in Juke Bunny, he expressed his views on religion. He was not a very religious man. He was secular. In fact, when he was about nine years old, the same age as me, he was actually the head of a mosque. However, the thing was, he was secular because he thought of other religions and other values as well. In fact, at night, he would even go to read in, re in the mosque. And he would sneak the Ramayana or the Mahabharata into the mosque. And so he was a very secular man. In fact, in one editorial in Juke Bunny in 1920, he wrote, Come, brother Hindu, come, Muslim, come, Christian, come, Buddhist, come, Jew. We shall quarrel no more. And so, you can see that he was a largely secular man, and he loved for all religion. While Qazi Nazrul Islam was Muslim, his wife, Pramila Devi, was Hindu. And while they did it take the difference in religion personally? The Bengali Muslim community certainly did. Controversy. Anyway, controversy aside, in 1928, his second son, Bulbul, also died of smallpox along with his mother. Even though he had two more children, the loss of his other children and his mother had stricken him hard. It was a huge loss for Qazi Nazrul Islam. I should probably say Nazrul instead of Qazi Nazrul Islam. This is getting tiring. Anyway, in 1931, Qazi Nazrul Islam had another baby. And then another baby. 
and then, uh, and he suddenly he was all over the media, radio, movie, television, movies. He was everywhere in the Indian subcontinent. If you were to walk by on the street, chances were that you would probably see that, uh, the face of that man five times. And so, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now he was like all over, and he was and uh, starred in several plays. Some of which uh, where he started as God. Some some of which he started as actors. He was huge in Indian media at the time. In fact, in 1936, he became the announcer for Kolkata Radio. However. Something hard hit at the end of his life. Tragically, again. In 1939, his wife, Pramila Devi, was paralyzed from the wrist down. However, she still tried to care for uh, her spouse, uh, Nazrul. But uh, little did he, Nazrul know, he would soon fall ill himself. In 1940, he started to enter a state of mental dysfunction. Because he, because he was unable to speak. He had trouble understanding language or words. He had trouble doing things like picking up. Eventually, he was taken to Vienna in order for a doctor to diagnose him. And Dr. Hans Hoff, a great expert doctor at the time, diagnosed him with Pick's disease. A disease that is now known as a type of dementia that affects the frontal lobe. This was it. He knew that he knew that he couldn't do any poetry anymore. But he still did. And so for twenty years after his diagnosis, he kept writing poems. Sifting out poems, writing poems, sifting them out. Even though he couldn't say them, that was passed on to his son, Sabaditi, who is an elocutionist, which basically means some uh, a guy who has the job of saying things in a professional tone. Like, <coughs> I am very professional. In 1972, the leader of the newly formed nation Bangladesh, Vangavandu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, asked the uh, Indira Gandhi uh, if the Indira Gandhi family if they could take Qazi Nazrul Islam over to Bangladesh. And while they, they never got the approval of the Qazi family, they did get the approval of the Indira Gandhi. And so they took Qazi Nazrul Islam over to Bangladesh. And he, according to a wish made in one of his songs, he was buried right next to Dhaka University. He will forever be remembered by the entire world as a landmark of literature. Thank you. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. The Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.